And we are going to solve the system using substitution. So does everybody remember how that works? Here is our system. This is 7.1. And we're going to solve it using substitution. So you have to get a variable by itself. Now, my suggestion is get the variable by itself that doesn't have a coefficient. In other words, if you have a plain letter without a two in front of it or without a one half in front of it or something like that, use that letter. So see this guy right here? He's all by himself. So I'm gonna move the two Y over. So I will have um, X equals four minus two Y. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna take this right here. I'm gonna cut him out and I'm gonna glue him right on top of that X because that's what X equals. Now you guys did this in first year algebra, so you this is good, you know how to do this. So now I have two times four minus two Y minus Y equals three. So I took that top equation and I kind of stuck it into the second equation. So now I only have one equation, I'll do my distributive. So I have 8 minus 5y equals 3. Now we'll solve it like a regular equation, so we'll subtract 8. So negative 5y equals negative 5. And y equals 1. Now you remember though you aren't done, right? Because your job is to find the x and the y. Your answer to all of these will be a point, x comma y. We now know the y part is one. How do we get the x part? We just plug it back in, and actually you can plug it in anywhere, but it's easy to plug it in right here. If you put a one in there, then what does this say? x equals four minus two, so x is two. Joseph, what are you doing? Do you remember this? Yeah. Okay. I feel like there's a cafeteria here. Orange? No. <laughs> okay. All right, now, there are a couple more that are substitution. So let's do, let's do the substitution one. So number three. Same exact kind of problem, but it is a little bit harder. Now we are substituting. So remember, when we substitute, we like to get a letter all by itself. Oh, don't I have one all by itself already? So I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to plug him in right here. Okay, now be careful. We got some arithmetic to do. X plus X plus one squared equals five. Everybody okay with that? Now, don't you dare square and square. What do we do here? Foil, foil. This is a foil. F O I L. Foil, foil, foil. So X plus. X squared plus 2X plus 1 equals 5. Now, I am ancient. I foil for a living. I can do it in my head. If you can't, foil it out over here to the side. X squared plus X plus X plus 1. That's how I got this right here. All right, let's clean that up. That's going to be a little quadratic equation. So we have X squared plus 3X. I'm going to say minus 4 equals 0. I like to have my quadratics equal to Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. 
this is a no watch zone as well as a no phone zone. I can't do that. Come on. No. Yes, I can. And I am. All right. Now stop it. Okay. All right. So I like to have my quadratic set equal to zero. Everybody okay with that? Now, what do I do with it now? That choice. What do you want to do with that? It does factor. So if you can see that, you can go ahead and factor it. What if you don't want to factor it or can't figure out how to factor it or maybe it doesn't factor? What do you do then? Use the quadratic formula. This one does factor. X plus 4, X minus 1. So I'm going to get two answers this time. I'm going to get X equals negative 4 or X equals 1. Would you agree with that? Now, here's what's going to happen. You look at all that work. We did, we did a ton of work. We're all excited. We got an answer. We're going to move on to the next problem. But you aren't done. Remember, your answer has to be points. So you have an X value of negative 4 and an X value of 1. We're going to have two points this time. So if X is 1, Y would be 2. Everybody seeing what I'm doing? What if X is negative 4? Negative 3. Very, very good. All right, that was a little harder. Does anybody have a question about that? All right, there's one more substitution, number six. So let's do that one. And then we'll talk about the elimination one. And then we'll be done with this section. Oops. <coughs> I watched it and wasn't that problem. I cut some stuff backwards. Okay, it says you do substitution. So I gotta solve for something, and Joseph suggests solving for this guy. I agree, I think that's the easiest. So if I solve for that, x will equal what? Four plus y. Four plus y? Is that all right? So then we'll take this guy right here and plug him in right here. So 2y minus 2 times 4 plus y equals 3. Actually, this is not a foil because I'm not squaring, right? It is going to be a distribute. You do have to make sure you're distributing the negative sign, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Negative no. 8 can't equal 3. These oh. cancel, right? What does that mean about the answer to this question? There's no solution. That is right. Now, what I want you to understand is, in each of the three problems that we have done, we have had shapes. And the point that they intersect has been your answer. So like this one was a parabola and a line. This was a parabola, this was a line. So you ended up with two places where they intersect, right? Our first example was two lines. So we got one place where they intersected. This is two lines, but they're not intersecting. So what do they look like if they're two lines that don't intersect? They're parallel, that's right, Joseph. These are parallel lines. These two lines do not intersect because negative eight can't equal three, period. <laughs> that happens sometimes. When you get a nonsense statement, you know there's no intersection. Awesome. Okay, any question about substitution? All right, we're heading in. To problem two. Problem two 
says solve by using elimination. Now, who remembers what's going on when we do what we call elimination? Joseph? Exactly. The whole idea is to have two of these, either these two match or these two match. So when you add them together, they cancel out. Do you remember that? That's what I call eliminating. We're eliminating a variable. So I'm going to multiply this equation right here by three. Does this look familiar to you? What is going to happen when I multiply this equation by three? Well, it'll be 15x and 3y and 72. This one is 2x minus 3y equals 13. <clears throat> now I'm going to add these together. What happens when I add them together? These cancel. So if you didn't see before, do you see now why I times by 3? Right? So now what do I have? Remember, I'm adding. So I have 17x equal to 85. So x equals 5. Now, just like before, you're not done. You have got to find a point. I know the x is 5. So now I'm going to go back and plug in. And I can plug it in anywhere I want. I'll just plug it in this top one. If I plug in 5, I'll get 10 minus 3y equals 13. So I'll subtract 10. So negative 3y equals 3. And y equals negative 1. So you have two lines that are crossing out there at the point 5, negative 1. Now number 4, I don't know, let's look at it. Number 4, you've actually got a couple of options. Could you multiply the second one by 3 again? Yep. What else could you do if you wanted? You could multiply the top one by negative 2. Because your job is to get rid of either these or these. So you could make this one a negative 2, or you could make this one a 3. It is not going to change your answer either way. So, John, which one you want to do? You want to multiply the top one by negative 2 or the bottom one by 3? You want to multiply the bottom one by 3? All righty, let's do it. So I'm leaving the top one alone because John said, and I'm multiplying the bottom one by three. Now, one mistake that's sometimes made is you forget it's the whole <coughs> row by three, so that includes the six. It has to be multiplied by three. Everything times three. Now we're going to add. Those are gone, just like Mena. So 7x squared equals 7. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, wait a second. So x squared equals 1. Now watch it. What does that mean, x is? Plus or minus 1. You got two answers again. Trey, we're going to do it the other way in a minute, but let me finish this. You got two answers again. We got either x is 1 or x is negative 1. All right, so now I'm going to go back and I'll just plug it in up here at the top. So 1 minus 3y squared equals negative 11. So 
So negative three y squared equals what? Negative 12. So y is plus or minus two. And that's for both of these, because does it matter in my equation if I put in one or negative one, am I gonna get different answers? No, both times I'm gonna come out with two or negative two. So Trey, you should have gotten two and negative two. Yeah, did, did you? I'm so sorry about it. Oh, okay, yeah, you gotta be careful about that. Now, right now this doesn't mean anything to you, but it will later. That top equation is what we call a hyperbola. So it has a shape. Let me get the out of there. It, it has a shape. That top equation has a shape that looks like this. And the bottom equation is an ellipse. How many places do those two things intersect? One, two, three, four. How many answers did we get? Four. That's two and that's two. Those are the four places these curves intersect each other. All right, one more, number five. It is an elimination problem. Here we go. Now, if we are doing this with elimination, and that's what the directions say, then we got to do some work here before we even get started. What's the matter with that set of equations? Things are lined up right. If you're going to do elimination, they have to be lined up. So the first thing I'm going to do is move his 6y over to the other side. Is that okay with everybody? I'm moving this guy over here so that my things are lined up. Now I'm going to eliminate. So what do I need to multiply by? Right now nothing's going to cancel. What would I multiply by to make something cancel out? To multiply the top equation by negative 2. I think that's a great idea. So I have negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 16. Remember, we're multiplying all the way across. Uh-oh. 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 This is a little different than last time. Last time, I got something like 3 equals 8. What am I going to get this time? What's over here? Zero. What's over here? Zero. Now, three does not equal eight. So we said that was no solution. Does zero equal zero? That means these are the same line. If you took your calculator out and graphed those two equations, they'd be right on top of each other. So we're not looking for one point where they cross. They cross at all points. They're right on top of each other. Okay? So, again, a nonsense answer means no solution. Zero equals zero means same line. They're identical. These two equations are the same equation. And then everything else is, I guess, equals 2y plus 7 or something like that. Okay? Now, guess what's going to happen tomorrow? We're going to take a quiz. No way. And yes. And you know what you're going to have to do on this quiz? What's up, man? You're going to have to do one problem with substitution and one problem with elimination. Right? So to practice the little packet that I just gave you, the very first problem on that little packet that I just gave you, Everybody get out the packet that I just gave you. Look at the very first problem. We're going to practice it together. Now, it says solve in the method of your choice. We're going to do it both ways. 
So we're going to do substitution and we're going to do elimination with this problem. So write small enough that you can get both of them in there. Because we're going to do it both ways because tomorrow you're going to have to use both methods. Alright? So here we go. Substitution. <coughs> What do we do if we're going to substitute? This is tomorrow's quiz. What do we do if we have to substitute? We got to get one of the letters by itself. And looking at this scenario, it makes sense to get that one by itself. So I'm going to rewrite that top equation, y equals what? What does y equal? 5 minus 2x. And then I'm going to take this guy right here and plug him in right here. So 3x minus 2 times 5 minus 2x equals 4. I am using elimination. I mean substitution, I'm sorry, I need to do the substitution. I'm going to do elimination in a minute. Alright, so 3x minus 10 plus 4x equals 4. What have I got? 7x equals 14. So x is 2. Remember though, our answer is an ordered pair. Yes, it's on the packet I just gave you today. It's the first question. We're just doing it for practice because tomorrow we have a quiz. I will give you a problem and say use substitution. So that's what we're doing here. What do I do once I figure out x is 2? Plug it back in and it looks like y is 1 if I plugged in right. Jonathan, yeah. you with me? Oh, yeah. you're, you're ahead of me. You're amazing. All right. Now, there'll be another problem. I'm just going to do the same one for convenience. But there'll be another problem that you have to do elimination for. All right. So let's look at this problem now. We're going to do it again. You better get the same answer. And we're going to eliminate this time. So kind of looking at the situation, what do you think might be the easiest thing to do if we're going to use elimination? Multiply top by two. Multiply the top by two. So it would be 4x plus 2y equals 10. Please don't forget to do the whole row. And then 3x minus 2y equals 4. Now when I add, my y's go away. Oh my gosh, look what's going to happen. x equals 2. And if I plug it back in, I have 2 times 2 plus y equals 5. So y equals. In, in real life, you can. In real life, you can. On tomorrow's quiz, you can't. I'm going to make you do one with substitution. I'm going to make you do one with elimination. But after you prove to me you know both methods, then I won't care. Do it however it works. Because some problems, it's better one way than the other, right? Yeah. And I'll set it up tomorrow so it's... I'm not going to give you a really messy substitution or anything like that. I just want to make sure you know that procedure. So everybody clear on tomorrow? Okay, then I have to substitute, then I have to eliminate. Okay, now get out your new note packet. No, I handed these out last week. Everybody got one. Don't even tell me you didn't get one. And if not, take a picture with somebody. Here we go. <laughs>
Today we are doing something most people, most kids, find this a really easy unit. I hope you do too. Um, there will be some work later on the graphing calculator where you will have to have a graphing calculator. So please, um, you know, make sure you try to bring one to class so you'll know what buttons to press and all. Okay, vocabulary. We're going to start this little unit on matrices. And a matrix, let's give you some definitions here. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. So an example of a matrix, I'll just make up an example of a matrix would be this. That is a rectangular arrangement, called an array, of numbers. That's a matrix. I haven't seen those in a minute. Have you guys studied them before? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, awesome. Good, good. Now, the numbers inside the matrix are called the entries. So an entry, sometimes it's called an element. Those are the numbers inside the matrix. Yeah, these are vocab words that you need to know. There will be vocabulary on your next test. So the entries, sometimes called elements, are the numbers inside the matrix. So this is an entry. This is an entry. Now, the way we identify those entries is like this. I have called this matrix A. This guy right here would be little a, which clues me in that he's in big A. So he's little a sub one three. Now, what do you think that one three might represent? It's in row one, column three. These are called rows, and this is called a column. So when I put this subscript on here, the first number is the row number, and the second number is the column number. And this may sound dorky, but a kid told me a few years ago, Roman Catholic, row column. Everything is row column. So first row, third column. First row, third column. That number is a three. All right, what about this? What's this? Um, A sub uh, two four. What would that number be? What number is in the two four spot? That would be the second row, fourth column, so what number is in that spot? Eight. eight. That number is an eight. It is in the second row and the fourth column. Is that okay with everybody? All right. Um, dimensions, the dimensions of the matrix are rows by column. So in other words, the dimensions are the size of the matrix. So when we have to give the dimensions of the matrix, it's rows by column. It's like you're telling me how big this room is. You would say 20 by 30. That means 20 feet across, 30 feet wide or whatever. If I'm talking about the size of this dimension, or size of this matrix, it's always row by column. So it would be two by four. This is a two by four. And when we read that, we say two by four. So if I had a matrix that was six by three, that would mean it had six rows and three columns. The first number is the row number always. The first number is always the row number. The second number is the column number, Roman Catholic row column. Next term on here is square matrix. What do you think it means to be a square matrix? 
they have the same number of rows as columns. So they be a two by two or a three by three or a seven by seven. A square matrix has the same number of rows as columns. And if we had time, I mean, there's a whole course, an entire semester that can be devoted to matrices. If we had time, we'd talk about all the specialness of squares, but we're only gonna have a little bit of time. So we'll do a couple of special things with squares. A scalar. A scalar is just a fancy uh, word for a real number or a coefficient. So I'm going to come back to my matrix A here for a second. And suppose I put a 2 in front of it. This is called a scalar. Now, you can say to me, well, Mrs. Ford, why do they, why don't they just call it coefficient? I don't know. The study of vectors and matrices has its own language, and one of the words is scalar. So what would 2A be? You want to take a wild guess? I bet you can do it. What's 2A? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. When you multiply a matrix by a scalar, or when you multiply a matrix by a coefficient, all you do is take every number times that. So all of those get times by two. If this had been a negative three, then they would all get times by negative three. No big deal, not hard at all. Equal matrices. Any idea what we mean by equal matrices? Would, uh, do you think these two would be equal? same size and that's a start you got to be the same size uh, but what else do you have to be if you're going to be equal same, same, same entries the same corresponding entries these do not match so they are not equal if I told you that this matrix was equal to this one <laughs> then you would tell me okay mrs. Ford that means a has to be one B has to be 2, C is 3, and D is 4. To be equal, you not only have to be the same size, you got to have the same numbers in the same spots. Okay? Same numbers in the same spots, same size. That's what it takes to be equal. Marley, you with me? Yeah. Same numbers in the same spots, same size. All right, let's see what we've learned. Let's try problem one. What are the dimensions of A? It's still on the board. Dimensions of A are two by two. It has two rows and two columns. I'm looking at A in, on the paper now. How about B on the paper? Two by three. Rows go this way. How many rows do we have? Two. Columns go this way. Think of the White House, people. The White House has columns, right? How do those columns go? Up and down. That's what columns are. So we have two rows. The rows have a bleacher and three columns. So B is two by three. All right. Question B. A sub two one. It is the number three. Very good. Did you look in matrix A? Second row, first column. Perfect. How about B sub 1, 2? Zero. Zero. Look in matrix B. First row, second column, that's a zero. How about C? There is none. There is none. Mrs. Ford's trying to trick you. C has no answer because there is no third row. So you say no answer. Not there. Impossible. No third row. However you want to explain it. Yep. All right. Now, see, we haven't talked about. Anybody want to take a wild guess about A plus B? We have a 
problem. It's an addition problem. Is three worse than a thing three? Uh, that's, a, that's a problem, Ashanti. If they aren't the same size, you can't add them. So the answer to C is no solution. And the reason is because in order to add matrices, you gotta have the same number. I mean, you gotta have numbers in the same spots. So look at D. It says, what is A plus C? Now, A plus C, we can do. Because aren't they the same size? So when I add them together, what number is going to go right here in this first spot right here? What number is going to go there? Zero. Now, how did I get zero? I added these two together. Now, how am I going to get this blank? I'm going to add these two together. So that's going to be a three. You see what's happening here? It's real easy, right? I know I say that all the time, but this really, really is easy. Now I'm adding these two. So this will be a seven and a negative four. And this is the answer then to A plus C. A and B could not be added because B has too many numbers. You can only add them if they have the same size. Is everybody good? Do you have E filled in yet? You should, we've already talked about it. What would 2A look like? 2A would look like 2, 4, 6, negative 8. How do we do 2a? We take all the numbers in a and times them by 2. Alright now, what in the world do you think we're going to do with that? Alright, so let's do 2c first. This is going to be 2C. So what will 2C be? Negative 2, 2, 8, 0. Oh, is that okay with everybody? Yes. Now I'm going to subtract A, which is 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Now, when you subtract, it's just like with regular numbers. You have to distribute the negative sometimes. So our answer is going to be negative 2 minus 1. What's negative 2 minus 1? Negative 3? 2 minus 2. 8 minus 3. 0 minus negative 4. 0 minus negative 4 would be 4, right? We have one more to go. Maybe you just think. Wouldn't it just be no solution? Or wouldn't it just be no solution, Chris says? Why? He's right, by the way. Because they're not the same. They're not the same size. You cannot add or subtract unless they have the same size. They have to be the same size. All right, so what happens tomorrow?